Um, so Sylvia and I are going to talk today about the Urarina Digital Heritage Project, which aims to create a digital collection of indigenous material that is held outside the community from which it orig originated. In this case, the material currently held, uh, the mater material is currently held at the University of Kansas, and it originated from the Urarina community, uh, an indigenous community in the Amazon rainforest in the north of Peru. This is uh, a multi-institutional, transnational, multilingual collaboration involving the Urarina community, Urarina cultural specialists, and faculty, librarians, museum staff, and technologists in the US. No one on this team has created precisely this type of project previously, so it presents us with an opportunity to learn what it takes to do such a project and to explore issues related to indigenous digital archives more generally. Uh, we wanted to pay attention to questions such as what are ethical aspects and practices of this type of collaboration? What kind of technology is appropriate? What are the different interests of each collaborator? How do we ensure the sustainability of the project? In short, we wanted to be mindful of ways to decolonize digital archival practices through recognition of Urarina sensibilities and, and knowledge practices. Uh, and now I'm not saying we are the model uh, for this, uh, this kind of work or claiming even that we're successful in it, but this is something that we are striving for and trying to keep in mind. One of the longer term goals of the project is to hand off oversight of it to the Urarina themselves or to an institution in Peru that works closely with them. It's basically an attempt to facilitate digital spaces for the Urarina communities to maintain uh, access, narrate, and exchange their digital history and heritage in culturally relevant ways, whether that's internally focused on preserving and passing on their traditional heritage or externally focused as they try to share their culture and gain more visibility and recognition uh, from the Peruvian state and beyond. Uh, next slide, please, Sylvia. Uh, so the description I just gave might suggest that this is a large, well-funded project with established structure and timeline. But on the contrary, this is really just a kind of grassroots startup project that emerged from the interests of the project team members. We did get a small amount of uh, very helpful funding from KU, University of Kansas, for which we are, are grateful. And we use that to pay our collaborator in Peru uh, and a summer undergraduate student assistant, and importantly, to pay members of the Urarina community themselves for their translation and design work. Uh, but, you know, and we hope to obtain more significant funding in the future. But to date, it's really relied on everyone just devoting hours of their time as available while often attending to more pressing needs. So the project has progressed slowly, and we'll touch on some other reasons for this. It's still in its early stage. At this point, we think of it as a kind of a prototype uh, or trial run, and most certainly a, a work in progress. Now, this map shows uh, the locations of the people who've been involved um, or plan on, in planning or developing the project to date. Uh, we have our core team members who are uh, spread out in in Peru, uh, Portugal, uh, Mukatu team members in Washington State University, members of the Spencer Museum of Art, uh, and uh, members of the Urina community themselves. And here is a, a list of everyone's name. I'm not going to go through that, but I did want to include it here for the record. Um, next slide, please. So um, just a little more background on the Urarina. They are a hunting and farming society in the Peruvian Amazon. They live prim primarily in wooden houses in villages with no electricity. Uh, they are geographically and linguistically isolated and not easy to reach, but nevertheless have a long history of engagement with global, national, and regional economies that have shaped their day-to-day -day life uh, with missionaries, colonial administrators, and traders as well as with agents of the singular Peruvian nation uh, to which the state gave birth. Following centuries of colonial rule, a pattern of skewed development emerged in the Peruvian 
Amazon that effectively blocked indigenous people like the Ururina from full participation in the Peruvian nation state. Uh, the Peruvian Ministry of Culture estimates the population of, of Ururina at 5,802 uh, people. Now, that all, all that, and this is not my area of expertise at all, that, all, all that information comes from our colleague Bartholomew Dean, who is a professor of anthropology here at Kansas, and who has done extensive field work uh, and writing about the Uarina and the region, and who's the one who initiated this project. Uh, next slide, Sylvia. So the material culture of the Uarina was collected by BART uh, in 1999 for the University of Kansas Museum of Anthropology, which was later folded into the Spencer Museum of Art. There are uh, 104 ethnographic, mostly kind of utilitarian items in the collection, which are currently available to view in the museum's online database and also now on our project website. Um, I don't know where that is. That noise is coming from me or somewhere else. Oh, can everyone hear that? Is that uh, is that noise just on my side? I'm hearing um, big beeping. No, yeah, okay. I don't know, but I just um, can you slow down a little bit, Brian, for the okay. <laughs> yes, I try. Okay, I'll try. Thank you. Um, so yeah, Professor Dean collected this material in uh, 1999 uh, for the KU Museum of Anthropology. Uh, which is later became uh, folded into the Spencer Museum of Art. There are 104 items in the collection. Uh, they are currently available on the museum's website and also on our, now on our website. Uh, in terms of developing the project, we worked on a couple of uh, fronts simultaneously, and Sylvia will talk more about these. I'll just mention them very briefly. Uh, so the Spencer Museum provided us with the existing images of the 104 items, uh, along with uh, the metadata, which was, your basic, which was your basic descriptive metadata um, with a simple name for the item, such as mask or basket or quiver and gourd with poison darts, uh, what material the item is made of, its size, and maybe a few keywords. Sylvia translated that metadata into Spanish, and our Ururina colleagues translated that into the Ururina language uh, with the aim of creating a trilingual site, which Sylvia will discuss a little bit. The other um, aspect of the project we really focused on was the platform. Uh, so our pilot project uh, for this, we wanted to test out the Mukutu uh, platform, which is a, a free... Oops. which is a free and open access platform designed at Washington State University. Uh, it's a heavily modified version of Drupal, but it implements more nuanced controls for access uh, and integrates the use of traditional knowledge licenses, which are uh, educational markers specifying the meaning of cultural items and their intended use. All of that is intended to allow communities to have greater control uh, of access and the use of material in the collection, especially those that have sacred meanings or uses. So our intent was to learn more about Mukutu to see if it would meet the needs of this collection and possibly explore Mukutu Mobile, which is an offline version of the platform that could be used when there is no general access to the internet, as is the case with the Ur Arena. And we worked closely with uh, Michael Wynn, one of Mukutu's developers, to adapt the platform to switch smoothly between the three languages. And there's been some, you know, this was this was kind of a conceptual challenge, um, and it's still not working. It's 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 parts of it are working nicely, and parts of it are not quite working the way we want. And uh, again, I'm going to let Sylvia talk more about our observations and insights into working with Mukutu and with uh, the metadata. Um, I'll just mention that uh, Michael uh, told us that they are currently working on Mukutu 4.0, which will have more 
support for multilingual projects. So uh, look for that hopefully to come out in the next maybe months or next year or so. Um, okay, thanks. I will turn it over to you, Sylvia. Thank you, Brian, and hello, everyone. Um, and as Brian note, has noted, after several meetings in which the team discussed the best way to create a digital and public resource that will give greater accessibility to this collection, we made the decision to do a pilot trial um, of Mukurtu because of its focus on indigenous collections and the access and educational tools it provides, though it has been mostly concentrated in Canada, Australia, and the United States, but not in Latin America. In this way, we will be able to create, um, our intention was to create a digital project that could reflect a more contextualized context collection, bringing to the forefront the local and traditional knowledges of the Urarina that were shared by the collaborators from Peru. As we started to add items and metadata, personalize the design and configure the community protocols, we found it difficult to navigate and configure the platforms best aligned with the collection with a number of features that may be useful in larger, more complex collections, but which were not needed for this particular project. The team members working on this part of the project had technical skills and could understand the tutorials and guidelines available in English, though we needed to call on Michael several times. This raised concerns about inviting the Urarina community and non-technical collaborators to work together in this part, since most of the accessible since most of the accessible was in one language. And even for us, it requires several consultations with the Mukurtu team via Zoom. In these meetings, we were assisted in things we were having trouble doing by ourselves and assisting us with certain functions that we wanted to incorporate, like the trilingual aspect of the pro project. Another concern that emerged was the speed of the site. While navigating the site as a viewer, it is very, very slow, and you will be encountering that if you um, get into the site, even if we have a good inter internet connection. This was a red flag for us when we imagine how difficult it will be to navigate the site for communities in the Amazon where technical it's minimal to non-existent or where they have access only through cell phones or local places that charge to use the computer and internet for short periods of time. It is important to take into consideration these factors since working from the global north may be very different than working from the global south specifically with com indigenous communities in an area that has limited technology and bandwidth access. Making the website trilingual, it's an important goal of the project and the process was very instructive. This process involved much collaboration with the Urarina team since the original metadata was in English, then translated into Spanish and then shared with the Urarina team to translate into the Urarina language and to include new sections of additional description that was relevant to the context and understanding of these items. It is important to mention two things that were observed in this process and give us a much broader understanding of the requirements of ethical collaborative practices within a global north-south digital project. First, there were some metadata or descriptions that were simply not easy or possible to translate directly between Urarina and Spanish in English. It requires a process of dialogue between the partners. The second, second observation relates to multi-generational understandings of these items, since some of these items are no longer in use by the current generation due to climate change or loss of certain traditions. Um, finally, I just want to, and we can share that at the end, but this kind of project, it's approaching the slow archives. 
And these are some of the um, dialogues we're having about what's the best platform for a long-term sustainability. Thank you.